And we start with our 2020 legislative look ahead. Over the next eight weeks, we'll give you a heads up on the issues that we'll be hearing about once the legislature gets back to work January 13th with the governor's state of the state speech. Today, school funding and a new plan supported by education advocates across the spectrum, public schools to charters. The goal, get more money to Arizona schools whose students come from homes with high poverty rates. Supporters say poverty is one of the greatest obstacles to student success. Joining us this morning, Megan Del Artino, representing the Education Finance Reform Group, and Don Penstacker of Save Our Schools Arizona. That's an education advocacy group. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So, so much of our attention is focused on big dollars, billions of dollars, and possible statewide votes on education funding. This is a much more targeted uh, uh, case of funding. So, make the case here. Where's the evidence that giving more money to schools in high poverty areas actually works, makes a difference? Dawn? Well, you know, anecdotally, any teacher, any educator will be able to tell you the kiddos that come from the tougher neighborhoods whose parents are working two jobs needs more support. But we've also done many quantitative studies over the years in different parts of the state. The more a, a community struggles with finances, with economics, the more those students are going to struggle. We know this. And so finally, we're taking a stab at that, something that I have called the elephant in the room, something that we have ignored. And now we're putting together a plan to stop ignoring it, to help those kids and help our state. And Megan, you represent school districts uh, dealing with these kinds, kinds of issues. How do they see it? What we know from research is that 60% of a child's academic performance is linked to individual student characteristics like poverty. And so without addressing poverty, we cannot move the low income achievement gap, which is that schools in high socioeconomic areas in the state are doing relatively well. Look at the, the letter grade system. Schools in low socioeconomic areas are not. Why? Because they have access to less funding. And we know that with targeted approaches, we can start to grow these kids. So some viewers might say, hang on, there was Prop 123 that delivered more money to schools. Teachers are getting raises for over the course of three years, why isn't that enough or why isn't that getting to the right places? Because what we need is actual needs-based staffing, right? We know that these children are starting kindergarten uh, behind. And so without providing them extra additional resources, they're never going to catch up in this um, race that we call education. If you start at different starting points, how can you expect that child to end in the same way that a different child will? So we need you know, uh, speech and reading specialists. We need tutoring. We need resources for them outside um, the class and with that we know that these kids can grow and we know that we can move nationally Arizona nationally and I believe a quarter of all students in Arizona are below the poverty line do I have that number right live in, live live in poverty yeah, it's shocking and sad, but Arizona has some of the highest rates of adverse childhood experiences, meaning our kiddos are dealing with hunger, they're dealing with homelessness, they're dealing with really tough situations at home. And as a school system, they come to us and they need to learn just like kids coming from really affluent neighborhoods. This is going to address the fact that they need more support. So how much money would the school kids get, the schools get, and where's it coming from? Well, it's coming from the state general fund, um, but under a proposal that we're trying to move forward, we're asking for $70 million. Um, we know that that is just a start, um, and we are targeting those funds um, based on your free and reduced lunch percentage in schools. So the more free and reduced lunch, the more targeted dollars we know that you'll need, uh, the more funding you get through this program. So it's all going on behind the scenes. Lots of stuff comes out to the open in January or so once the legislature is back in session. Uh, I've said broad spectrum of people working on this. I said that earlier. How broad is the spectrum? Who's involved? Uh, it is Republicans, Democrats, charters, district schools, um, all of the alphabet groups trying to come together because we all know that in order to move Arizona forward, Arizona nationally, we have to address poverty. And what about the most important Republican right now, Governor Doug Ducey? Do you believe he would include this or will include this in his state of the state speech or his budget uh, that week? Um, I have heard Governor Ducey say over and over again that he wants to close the low income achievement gap. I am hopeful um, that he will come out with something to address that. Uh, what it is, like we're, we're all still wondering. Don, is he on yeah. board? 
uh, we're hopeful that he is. You know, this, like I said, everyone in education knows this. The governor knows that this is something that we need to do. So with such a strong coalition, like you said, I think we have the best chance. And, and again, this is a small amount of the funding that our schools need. But we're hopeful that by showing this works, we can then take this as evidence to argue for even more money to a future governor, to a future legislature. All right, Megan Dale Artino and Don Penchthacker, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.